I believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Isn't that three? Well, of course it is. We have a doctrine of the Trinity. We're well aware of it. We say in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We say glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. But we say there is one God. This is sometimes presented as a kind of intellectual, even mathematical conundrum. One equals three. And many people have bashed their heads and strained their brains to try and explain how this can be possible, whether with shamrock or various other means. And while all these efforts are laudable, sometimes I think they miss the point a little. To me, at least, the doctrine of the Trinity talks about God as communion, as God as relational. Ultimately, it talks about God as love. If God is love, not just that God loves, but God is love, then it's difficult to imagine that with just one. Uh, we tend to call that kind of self-love narcissism or something like that. But the sense of a communion of three persons, and three is important, I'll explain that in a minute, of three persons, gives a sense that even in God there is this communion, there's this relationality, there's this ongoing delighting in each other. And while one could see that also with two, the advantage with seeing it as three is that those two are not just looking in on themselves, but always going outward to the other. So it's never a love which is purely inward looking. It's always one that's outward, that's creative. So that God's love spills out into creation, not because God needs creation, but because God desires that. God wants that. God wants to share his being with, with the whole of what he has created. And so we understand that in many ways, creation in one way or another reflects God, tells us something about God. And we also understand that we as human beings are, in some sense, God's masterwork. We may not always feel like that, it has to be said, but in human beings, not only can God express his love, but the creation can express that love back to God. But once again, if the creation is going to express that love back to God in the way that God loves, it's not got to be simply about me and God, but actually all these other people around me. So John writes elsewhere, how can you say you love a God you cannot see if you don't love your brother and sister whom you can see? Love of God is inseparable from love of neighbour. A neighbour is not just my nearest, but as, again, Jesus once expressed in the, in the famous story of the Good Samaritan, it's the other person who needs help above all. Those are most our neighbours who are most in need of our help. Those who are most therefore oppressed, marginalised, in poverty, etc., etc., etc. This takes me on to recent news, the death of George Floyd. That one image, awful image, reflects a problem, particularly in the United States, but not certainly limited to that, where a certain segment of humanity is severely disadvantaged, sometimes by overt racism, but also by what's sometimes called systemic racism. 
a world that is just skewed against them because of attitudes, often attitudes that are unrealised because of a history that's pushed that segment of the community into poverty, that's kept that segment of the community away from education. That injustice goes directly against our human nature, as it should be. It's part of our fallen human nature, perhaps, but God's vision of that perfect communion between Father, Son and Spirit being shared by his creation is undermined by that. Our doctrine of the Trinity is not just a conundrum, it's a call, it's a challenge. If we are to live the image of God which is in each one of us, in every human being, then we cannot sit back and tolerate the inequalities, the injustices that we see around us. And indeed, we need sometimes to check deep within our hearts. Do I see each and every human being as having the same dignity as I do? Do I see them all as equally loved by God? Whatever they have done. God doesn't take his love away from us when we sin. And therefore, even the people who we rightly criticise their actions sometimes still possess that dignity. It's inalienable. Because all are created in the image of God. And it is God's desire that that communion of Father, Son and Spirit be shared by all his creatures, especially human beings, that we all partake of God's divinity, of God's inner nature. This is the, the basis of the understanding of the incarnation, of God becoming man. We share in that. So next time we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Remember what we're saying about God, about what we're saying about humanity, and how that calls us to act in our world today. May God bless you all.